down and listen to my story about a man named Jed. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food, and up to the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is, black gold, Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jeb's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jeb, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbillies. back into the mansion. This rube living ain't for a sophisticated playboy like me. Go get dressed and help your Uncle Jed with the chores. Yeah, but this'll ruin me with the international jet set. <laughs> Talk sense, boy. Well, well, what if word was to get back to Princess Grace and Prince Reindeer? <laughs> Jeff, the, the whole mansion is full of girls. What? There's a different pretty girl sleeping in pretty near every room. I'll get dressed and go investigate. <laughs> That seemed to wake him up. Sure did. We all stay here. Them girls might be dangerous. Get home. We'll all go together. Does that sign say hotel for women? Sure enough does. That shorty kill him. Whilst we was living in the cabin, he must have sold the mansion. Do you reckon that's what happened? I'll go ask the girls. Never mind. We'll ask shorty. But you can't do that, Granny. I'll send him back to the hill. I'll go ask the girls. And here comes Jen. Maybe he knows about this. It'll be more reliable if I go ask the girls. If... No, it won't. But it'll be more fun. <laughs> Morning, everybody. Morning, Paul. Did you see all these signs? Would I be doggone? So that's how Shorty got all them women to come over here. How many girls do you reckon is staying in there? I'll go count them. <laughs> Never mind, just girl. We can wait till they get up. I wonder what time city girls get up. I don't know. I'll go find out. Hey, so, uh, you stick with us. I ain't scared of them little old girls. <laughs> Mighty brave, but uh, you stick with us. I'll come and fix some breakfast. Come on, everybody, to the kitchen. Where do you think you're going? If Granny's going to fix breakfast, somebody's got to go wake the girls. They likely got an alarm clock. I'll go see. Death Row? <laughs> <laughs> what are you fixing to have for breakfast, Granny? I'm just wondering what them city girls would like to eat. I'll go ask them. <laughs> oh, well, you're always after me to do chores. And now that I'm willing, you won't let me. What's going wrong with me? Where are we going? You'll find out. <laughs> I declare that Jethro has picked up Shorty's ways. Thank goodness he's gone back home. Well, maybe he's just hiding in the root cellar again. Maybe you're right. I'd best go check. Granny, yes. can I go ahead and start cooking breakfast? Uh, no. <laughs> no, Ellie, just make the coffee. <laughs> Ellie, on second thought, just boil some water. <laughs> Ellie. Yes, sir? Try not to burn it. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Jed, I can't believe you'd lock your nephew in a cage like a wild animal. It's true. You done violated my constitutional rights. I'm gonna get me a lawyer and throw down on you with a subpoena. <laughs> Lots of luck. I'm taking this case to the highest court in the land. I'll go even higher. Walter Cronkite's gonna hear about this. <laughs> Jed, do you reckon the Shorty Kellums could be hiding in the root cellar? I'll take a look. Well, Uncle Jed sure put you in the right place. He's gonna be sorry, though, because I'm going on a hunger strike. Is that a fact? Yes, ma'am. I'm gonna waste away and die right here in this cave. Well, that's too bad, because I was just fixing bacon and eggs, ham and grits, sausage and flapjacks, steak and fried taters, and fruit and cereal. I'll have a double helping each. What about your hunger strike? 
You don't expect me to start that on an empty stomach. <laughs> True, girls, we really are living in a mansion. When I woke up this morning, I thought it was all a dream. Oh, me too. The dreamiest part is that we get all of this for only a dollar a day. With meals and maid service. <laughs> oh, that shorty Callum's what a doll. I smell fresh coffee. Me too. Let's get dressed and come downstairs and have breakfast. Wait a minute. Shorty said we get breakfast in bed. What if Shorty serves it? Let's get dressed and then come downstairs and have breakfast. <laughs> Good morning, girls. Is everybody up? No, just three of us so far. Well, Granny asked me to find out how many for breakfast. Seven altogether. That Gran is a great cook. She sure is. Are you the maid who cleans our rooms and makes our beds? Yes, ma'am. I told Mr. Killams I'd do that. And your father does the gardening? That's right. And Shorty said there was a half-wit nephew. He must have met Jethro. He's locked up in a cage out back. <laughs> Is he dangerous? Well, only if you try to take his food away from him. <laughs> he won't be having breakfast with us, will he? Oh, no, ma'am. He'll like eating his cake. <laughs> Good. Well, we'll wait for the other girls and be down for breakfast. <laughs> Well, you know the old saying, early to bed and early to rise makes a man wealthy. I, I believe that's healthy, wealthy, and wise. Healthy and wise you can have. I'll take wealthy. <laughs> I hope you remember to bring Miss Bell with you this morning. Who? Jean Bell. She's employed here at the bank. And I promised to bring her to work? Oh, Chief, think back. She's the only member of the secretarial pool who didn't want to move into the Clappett Mansion, and you wondered why. <laughs> Well, I live at home, so I wouldn't save anything. Do you live in a mansion? Of course not. Do you ride to work in a limousine? No, I ride the bus. How much does it cost you? Fifty cents a day. Mm, that's two dollars and fifty cents a week. What are you getting at, Chief? Well, I live next door to the Clampett Mansion, and she can ride back and forth with me. Gee, that'd be swell. Oh, yes, I remember now. Gee, I'm sorry I forgot to pick her up. I could have collected that 50 cents bus fare. Gee, you are a miserable man. I am not. I'm as happy as a lark. Now, don't forget, I'm collecting $5 a week from each of those seven secretaries. That makes over $1,800 a year for little old me. You are just not to be believed. Now, now look, Jed Clampett is letting those girls live in his mansion for $1 a day. If he can be a philanthropist, so can I. <laughs> the only reason I continue to work for you is that when you finally get your comeuppance, I want to be there. <laughs> Big D. <laughs> Chief, I think your comeuppance is about to come up. Miss Bell's brothers are here to see you. Oh? Oh, you'll remember them when you see them. Come in, gentlemen. Look, I don't want to be disturbed. I'm not into anybody. I'm not into anybody except these two gentlemen right here. <laughs> well, what can I do for you, gentlemen? You can tell us why our sister left home. Your sister? Jean Bell. She works here, remember? She said you talked to her into moving away from home. Oh, that? Well, yes, I did, but there was a reason. We'd like to hear it. Well, you see, she had a chance to move into this mansion. Mansion? Beautiful, luxurious. Believe me, your sister is living the life of a princess. Who's the prince? <laughs> oh, no, no, nothing, nothing like that. You see, this is a hotel for women. All the single girls in my secretarial pool are staying there. Right, Miss Hathaway? That is correct, gentlemen. Each girl gets a private room with bath, meals, maid service, everything. And all for one dollar a day. A dollar a day? You know, mansion? Am I right, Miss Hathaway? Again, he is correct, gentlemen. You see, the mansion is owned by a truly exceptional man. He is enormously wealthy, but this has not affected his sense of values. He's simple, kind-hearted, generous, thoughtful. A true philanthropist in every... Please, Miss Hathaway, that's enough about me. <laughs> she forgot to add that I'm also very modest. Earl, do you believe this story? Not a word of it. Well, then I shall prove it to you. Miss Hathaway, call my hotel for women. Tell Miss Bell she need not come to work today. She can spend the whole day there. Oh, but she... Now! Nah, now! Nah. Do it quickly. <laughs> I have to be firm with some of my children. <laughs> now, I'm giving your sister the day off. 
And the two of you can go and see for yourselves the luxurious surroundings which I have so generously provided for her. <laughs> there, now, there's, there's the address of the mansion. That seems fair enough. Well, that's another of my qualities she left out. Modest and fair. <laughs> now, you'll find a family of retainers staying at the mansion, the, the Clampets. Now, they do the gardening, the cooking, housekeeping. You, you'll find your sisters being waited on just hand and foot. Really, Miss Hathaway? Oh, that's wonderful. Tell Mr. Drysdale thanks ever so much. Bye. Girls, you go on without me. I've got the day off. Ain't you going to work, Miss G? No, Mr. Drysdale gave me the day off. Can I help you make the bed? Oh, don't finish with that. Now I'm going to help Granny work in the garden and make soap. Oh, can I help too? You know how to make live soap? Sure. My mother used to make it down home. Well, all right. But I'd best give you some old clothes to wear. Fine. Come on. Okay, boy, I'm going to let you out now. It's too late for me to forgive you now, Uncle Jet. <laughs> yes, sir. I've done been humiliated clean past what my sensitive nature can stand. You're going to pay a terrible price for what you've done to me. What price is that? You're going to lose me. I'm running away from home. Is that a fact? <laughs> yes, sir. When animals is free to swing and human beings is locked in cages, well, well, that's all the hint I need. So you're leaving home. My pride demands it. So take a last look at your favorite nephew. <laughs> OK, I took it. <laughs> this is goodbye, Uncle Jed. Bye, boy. We won't meet again till you see me on the other side. The other side of what? The table. I'll be home for supper. <laughs> Mr. Drysdale's done give Jean the day off, so she's gonna help us with the chores. Bless your heart. But I gotta warn you, making live soap and digging in the garden and such ain't like secretary work. <laughs> oh, I know that. Jean says her ma used to make live soap. Is that a fact? Yes, ma'am. She made soul food, too, but not as good as yours. Oh, I have got a few cooking secrets. Could you teach me the secret of those hog jaws and collard greens you made last night? I'd be glad to. As soon as the other chores is done, we'll commence with the cooking lesson. Oh, wonderful. Ellie, you get the fire going under the soap kettle. Yes, I'm can. I'm glad to see you wearing working duds. I ought to change out of my good clothes, too. <laughs> I'll join you and Ellie out back. Gee, have you ever seen a swinging cat? Seen one? Honey, I swung with one. <laughs> Come meet Rusty and Duke, too. Duke? That's the name of the cat I used to swing with. <laughs> my Duke's a dog. So was mine. <laughs> This is it, Cookie. Hotel for women. Yeah, this really is a mansion. You can't blame Jean for wanting to live in a place like this. Come in! Oh, howdy, boys. Hello. How do you do? I'm sorry to tell you, but this hotel is just for girls. We know that. We just came here to see our sister, Jean Bell. Oh, yeah, little Jeannie. Well, she ain't here in the house. She's out in the cabin out back. Cabin? Come on, I'll show you where she is. You know, Jean, I think it needs more renderings. I think you're right. Well, Granny made chitlins this morning. I reckon they's a can of renderings in the cabin. I'll stir while you look. <laughs> What is she doing? Making live soap. When she's done with that, she's going to do work in the garden. And then she's going to get to the cooking. <laughs> Thanks very much. But don't tell our sister we were here. Are you leaving already? Yes, ma'am. We have to go talk to a bank president. I know one. His name is Mr. Drysdale. That's the one we're going to talk to. Well, give him my love. We'll do that. He's going to need all the love he can get. <laughs> How'd the lie soap turn out, Granny? Oh, just dandy, Jed. 
That Jean Bell can make life so pert near as good as me. Where is she? Harry and Ellie's out digging taters. They've already picked two bushels of collard greens, weeded the turnip patch, and hold the beams. Well, doggy, that little Jean is a dandy worker for a city girl. Oh, Jed, she's a hill girl. Howdy, Pop. You know Miss Jean Bell. I sure do. Looks like you girls got a dandy mess of taters. Yes, sir. Granny, would you like for us to wash and peel them? No, I'll do that. You two deserves a rest. Hey, Jean, would you like to go for a swim? Oh, that sounds great. Well, come on. Be back directly, Granny. Take your time. Granny, would you show me how to make that possum pie you had last night? You bet I will, darling. Thank you, Granny. <laughs> Oh, howdy, Mr. Drysdale. Come on in. Thank you, Ellie. Well, it looks like you've really taken advantage of your day off, Miss Bell. Does that mean it's over? Have your brothers come to see you? No, sir. Then it's not over. Enjoy <laughs> yourself. Have fun. Mr. Drysdale, yes. you want to go swimming with us? No, I'll get back to the bank. I just want to see how things look, and they look real good. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, girls. He sure is a nice man to have for a ball thing. He is today, for some strange reason. <laughs> All right, Miss Hathaway, bring in your dictation book. We'll get. <laughs> Who did this? One of the two boys waiting in your office. <laughs> All right, who's a smart Alec? Who did this? Me. Oh, that was real smart, Alec. <laughs> no, no, it's Earl, isn't it? Right. <laughs> Great, Brenny, just great. What's the idea? We went to see our sister. Oh, good, good. Then you had a first-hand picture of the life she's leading. Right. Uh, you, you saw the palatial mansion? Right. You saw the luxurious surroundings? Right. You saw the lovely garden, the beautiful swimming pool? Right. And you saw your sister enjoying all that? Wrong. <laughs> Wrong? Right. When I saw her, she was having a ball. You have a funny idea of how to have a ball. Tell her something must be wrong. Right. <laughs> well, maybe you better go back and have another look. Would you like to come with us? Would you like me to come with you? We would. Then I'm coming with you. Right on. <laughs> Lesson, Granny. Good, good. Here, put on this apron. Do I get a cooking lesson too, Granny? Well, uh, darling, I think your talents run more in other directions. <laughs> like, uh, uh, like scrapping. Scrapping? Uh, yeah, you know, like cutting up scraps to make quilts. Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'd like to do that. What shall I do first, Granny? Well, you can come in fixing the dough to make the possum pie crust. Jed. Can I see you for a minute? Sure. Jed, I got a problem. What is it? I am plumb out of salted down possums. What you gonna do? Well, them pet possums of Ellie's is nice and fat. Oh, no, Granny. You ain't putting Bonnie and Clyde in no pie. <laughs> but I promised Jean. I tell you what. Jethro has just come back from running away, and him and me will take a ride out in the country and bring you back a brace of them. Good. Granny, want to show me what to cut up for quilt scraps? Yes, darling. Jeannie, you can be simmering the hog dolls. All right, Granny. Come on, darling. We'll go up to the attic and look for some material to do the quilting with. Yes, ma'am. Uh, why are we coming out here? This is where the help lives. Right. And our sister is it. Oh, no, no, no. Your sister lives in the mansion. We don't think so. Oh. <laughs> Gentlemen, be believe me, something is wrong. Right. <laughs> now, you fellas go back to the bank and wait for me. I'll straighten this out. <laughs> What are you doing? Making possum pie. You're not supposed to be doing this kind of work. But I want to. Nonsense. Now, go put on your good clothes. You're coming back to the bank. Please let me stay and finish my possum pie, my hog jaws, and collard greens. Nothing doing. You're coming with oh. me. Please, 
Mr. Drysdale, please don't make me go back there. You're going back where you belong, and that's that. I've had enough trouble with you. Come. Where do you suppose he's taking her now? Let's follow him and find out. Right. <laughs> Never mind what you promised, Granny. You're coming back to the secretarial pool where you belong. <laughs> what do you think you're doing? I'm staying right here until I explain to Granny. Now, give me the key. No, sir. Okay, I'll call the locksmith. Hey, Cookie and Earl, what are you doing here? Looking for you and Mr. Drysdale. Where is he now? He just went into the mansion. <laughs> you can sit right here and cut your quilting blocks, honey. Yes, sir, Granny. I'll go see how Jean's doing with the cooking. Granny. <laughs> Mr. Drysdale, how'd you get in here? Cookie and Earl put me in here. <laughs> Who are they? Well, it's a long story, Granny. Can you get me out of here? Sure. Where's the key? I've got it. Well, let's have it. I can't. They made me swallow it. <laughs> black hat, black boots, black belt. Bad news for the bad guys. Walker, Texas Ranger. Weeknights at 6 on the Hallmark Channel. In 1425, France needed a miracle. What it got was a warrior. Hallmark Channel presents Joan of Arc, the true story of a peasant girl who emerged to lead an army and change the course of history. Joan of Arc, child of war, soldier of God. Premieres Monday at 10 on Hallmark Channel. This has been a film